Hello everyone, this is Chemdork, and welcome to another Minecraft video. This video is the second episode of the Science of Minecraft series, where we take a particular aspect of Minecraft, look at it in great detail, do some experiments, and hopefully learn a little something that can help you all use that aspect in Minecraft and that game mechanic in Minecraft better in the future. So we looked at episode one, looked at water in Minecraft, and if you haven't seen that episode, I encourage you to do so. The link will be posted in the description of this video, as well as on the top right about now. Uh, so go ahead and click it and, and view that video if you, if you want to learn a little more about a water and see what we did there with that. This video, we'll be talking about TNT. And to make this video, I knew I'd be setting off a lot of TNT, both in this video itself, as well as to prepare for it. So I knew I needed some sort of blasting area that would uh, allow me to set off TNT without having to rebuild each time. And uh, this is what I made. It's about a 2020 area, 20 by 20 area of obsidian. So TNT I can set off uh, and still have this area pretty much intact. So without further ado, let's get right into it and talk a little bit more about TNT. So you don't just find TNT lying around everywhere in Minecraft. You have to make it. And in order to make it, uh, it's pretty easy to craft. You just need to know the formula. And that is you need to have some gunpowder powder. You place the gunpowder in an X pattern, as you see here, and then you fill in the rest with, uh, with sand. And so this will make TNT. One at a time. One uh, TNT is fairly expensive for the amount of blocks, but uh, it uh, is well worth it because it's a pretty cool block. Let's talk about some simple game aspects of TNT itself. So you right-click to place it, and then you left-click to set it off. But it's not quite that simple. So let's notice one thing when, you, when I left click on this TNT block. You notice how it did a little jump there? Well, that jump is actually very important for TNT. Uh, and it's one of the things that's uh, very key to you understand to use TNT correctly. The second aspect of TNT that you should know is that it can fall down and is affected by gravity only when it's activated. So right now it's a solid block that uh, I can't walk through and it doesn't fall down. When I left click on it, it does the little hop and it also falls down. And then it's uh, a few seconds after you left click, it'll explode. So it hops in, look like this general direction. We can confirm that by building ourselves a little stage for the TNT to sit on. Oop, I'll place the TNT first in the middle. And then put this block here. So if the TNT block would drop straight down, this would be no problem. It should drop right down and be level with these other dirt blocks. When I right click, uh, left click it, however, you notice it stays on the top because it doesn't fall straight down. The other aspect is the TNT, of course, destroys blocks, and we all know that. So what I did is I built myself this little uh, apparatus here, which stops the TNT from uh, jumping to the side like that, uh, or it hold by holding it in place. So when I hit the block, you notice it falls right down into the center there. And so that'll in ensure that the TNT, when it falls, it's going to fall in the same place every time so that we get consistent results when we test things. Um, you notice the block jumped in this direction. This is east in this game. Uh, it jumped a little bit to the north, but mostly to the east. And so that's, uh, that's two aspects of, uh, of the TNT that you should know. The third aspect, third thing that changes about the TNT when you left-click it, is that you can walk right through it. TNT block turns into something called an entity in Minecraft. It's no longer a solid block, and this comes into play for uh, building cannons, and we'll talk about that in the second part of this uh, episode. Uh, but the, for the first part, we'll just discuss on game mechanics. And so that's how you use TNT in the world. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about what happens to the blast when we set it off. So for this next test, I have two TNT blocks, one that I uh, is encased within cobblestone, and one that is encased within sand. And so when we set them off, we'll see uh, the differences between the two. So let's set off the cobblestone one, stand back here, and get a look. Okay, so we'll see that the cobblestone TNT blast set off a pretty small area of cobblestone was destroyed. It was only uh, the eight blocks immediately surrounding the TNT blast. And the rest was sand down the bottom here, and you see the blast really irradiated um, mostly downward in this case. Let's see what the difference between uh, that and setting off the blast in sand. I think this is sand about five blocks down. 
And uh, as you see, much bigger area was affected, and much, much more damage was had by setting it off in sand versus, t versus in cobblestone. This has to do with a property known as blast resistance. Um, blast resistance is a property of blocks. Every block has a blast resistance, and that is the resistance that block has to TNT or other explosions, such as creepers and all those other fun things that we like to ex that we like to have explode. Uh, gas fireballs are also another one. So uh, we'll be looking at that in a little bit here. Now uh, we can actually study that in our blasting area, which is what we'll do right now. So let's now do some experiments in our blasting area, where we study the effects of a TNT blast on particular things in Minecraft. Uh, we have a nice little lab here set up, and um, this represents this lighter area represents the middle area where the TNT will fall. And um, let's use torches to gauge the distance, first of all, of the TNT blast to see how far can a TNT actually destroy things in Minecraft. And a torch is a good one to choose because it is uh, it has the lowest blast resistance, so that is it is the easiest to destroy. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's place a torch at seven blocks from that dead center of this uh, TNT blast. So I'll put our TNT up above, and let's set it off and see what happens. As you notice, that torch was completely destroyed. So um. Let's see. We know that seven blocks then is within the uh, maximum distance that things can be destroyed in this particular setup. So uh, let's set up and do another experiment. So I reset the setup and now I've put the torch at eight blocks away. And uh, let's see what happens to the torch when we set off the TNT now. And you notice, after that exploded, the torch is still intact. Hello, torch. Um, so we know now that the maximum distance is seven blocks for TNT to destroy something. Uh, this can vary depending on where your TNT lies, um, and we're going to do another experiment here, uh, just changing one other thing, and we'll see what affects this blast a little bit more. So now I've changed the setup a little bit. I've kept that torch at seven blocks, which was destroyed before, and now surrounded this area with nine other torches placed pretty closely. And we'll see what happens to the TNT blast now. And here you'll notice all those nine blocks which were closer to the TNT block were destroyed, but the torch that was seven blocks away that was destroyed before is now intact. And this shows one another property of TNT blasts, which um, essentially you can think of a TNT blast as having a definite, a definite amount of blasting power which is then distributed to all the blocks surrounding within range. So in this case, the amount of power that was eventually hitting this torch was enough to destroy it. In the other case, the amount of power hitting the torch was not enough to destroy it because some of that power was absorbed by blocks that were closer to the TNT blast. And you'll see this and can use this to explain certain things that we saw over here. So what we just did uh, in our experiment over there really is actually shown um, here as well. And you see that the amount of sand is about, uh, I think it's three blocks in this case, and it's still about the same, three blocks over here. But you'll notice the, the damage is a lot different over there versus over here. In this case, the cobblestone absorbed a lot of the impact, and so not much damage was done uh, down below. In the case over here, the sand didn't absorb as much of the impact, and so more blasting force hit the blocks down below. And this it can explain the different shape of our two holes, as well uh, uh, using the blast resistance differences between cobblestone and sand. Sand is relatively easy to destroy. It has a blast resistance of 2.5 versus, versus uh, cobblestone, which has a blast resistance of 30. And so let's go back to our rig and do a few more experiments for uh, to showcase this uh, blast resistance. So next we're going to go through uh, using this rig to uh, define the blast resistances of various substances. Now they are defined on the Minecraft wiki, but we're going to use this to test those uh, blast resistances and see what that really means in game. So um, I've devised a system. This is the center point for uh, where the, the TNT block will, will fall. And I devised a system where I place blocks within a certain, uh, in a certain pattern and then uh, gauge and see how many of those blocks were destroyed in any given TNT blast to sort of uh, estimate the blast resistance of a particular substance. So I found that I put uh, 
blocks at uh, varying distances, and uh, as long as that pattern is maintained, and the only difference being the kind of block, you can use that to sort of gauge the blast resistance. So one, two, three. So I place sets of three at um, <coughs> all four sides. Uh, the first set of three is within three blocks. Second set of three is four blocks away. Two, three, four, five. Whoops, five blocks away for the third set of three. And then finally, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks away for the last set of three. So we'll do this first with um, <coughs> with the torches because they're the least resistant. And then we'll go through and uh, see what the effect is on a variety of different types of blocks. <coughs> so let's see. So in the case of the torches, you notice one torch remains, all the other torches were destroyed. So all three were destroyed for that were three away, all three that were destroyed for three, uh, four away, and all three were destroyed that were five blocks away. And then two were destroyed for um, uh, six blocks away. So that's in total um, ten, uh, 11 of the 12 uh, block positions were destroyed. And if you notice, only one, two, three, four, five torches were actually recoverable. And this is uh, indicating that uh, TNT is not really a good way to mine uh, for materials because about um, two thirds to a third, somewhere around there, of your material will be wasted in the process. Oh, darn. Um, well, let me set this off. <coughs> so I'll reset and uh, we'll go through some other substances with different blast resistance. The next block up in the blast resistance scale, at least the most common one, is uh, dirt, which has a resistance of 2.5 instead of zero, as in torches. And so we actually see the same amount of damage, so this rig may not be uh, good enough to gauge whether uh, there's much of a difference. And I will say there is a slight element of chance here um, as well. There, uh, there's a bit of randomness to how, um, how damage is calculated, and so sometimes this block is here, sometimes it's not. Uh, I've noticed in some cases it destroys two of these, in other cases it only destroys one. So uh, there's a slight difference, but it's not too noticeable in this rig which means it's not really going to be too noticeable for anyone playing the game. The next block type I'd like to show is sand. So we saw it over there. Sand actually has the same resistance as dirt, so we expect it to behave similarly. Um, this might show some of the chance that we see, and indeed, as you see, we have two left over, just like I was telling you about. Sometimes there's a little bit of element of chance. Let's do this again and see if we get the same pattern. Okay, once again, this is sand. Let's see what happens this second time. First time we left off with one left there and one left there, and as you see, again, two are left over, this time in a slightly different location, the six block, both in the six blocks away. So there is some randomness to this calculation, but in general you can see a trend. One of the next blocks up in the blast resistance scale is uh, wool, as one of the other commonly used blocks. So uh, that has a blast resistance of four. So let's see what happens with wool. And you see wool actually leaves three instead of two as we saw with uh, sand and, uh, like I said, sometimes dirt. Next block we're going to try is wood, which has a blast resistance of 10. And this time we left two over here at the five blocks uh, away end, and all three uh, in the six blocks away end. So in total, we destroyed three, six, seven out of the 12 blocks. Lastly, we're going to see how cobblestone behaves, and cobblestone has a blast resistance of 30. It's one of the strongest blocks that you n normally encounter. And here we destroyed all of wall that were uh, three blocks close, but uh, only two of the wall that, uh, that was four blocks close to the, the blast zone. And so in total, only five of the 12 blocks were destroyed with cobblestone. So that concludes part one of Science uh, of Minecraft ep episode number two. Part two will be, um, there will be a link to the video uh, for part two right at the end of this, uh, just after this really cool explosion where we will talk a little bit about cannon mechanics and uh, how to build one and why they work in Minecraft. And um, first, uh, treat your eyes to this pretty cool explosion. Awesome. Oh, I lost one of my dirt uh, towers. Uh, see you in the next Minecraft video.